All right, we're going to start here in about five minutes, ladies and gentlemen. It's John Bartos getting ready for making it rain. How to reach two to ten times more revenue without working harder. We'll be right back. Hang in there. Get ready. Talk to you shortly. We've got three minutes, and we're going to start the webinar. Three minutes. Uh, this is John Bartos. Get ready. Making it rain. How to reach two to ten times more revenue or billings without working harder. Talk to you shortly. All right, it's John Bartos here, 60 seconds before we start the webinar. Making it rain, how to reach two to 10 times more billings without working harder. Now, I want you to think of about a couple questions. What do you think your potential is for you and your organization in this great game of executive search? Think about that. What is your potential? I know what you did last year, what you did the day before, year before, but what really is your potential in this business. Think about that. Be right back at you. Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to today's webinar, Making It Rain, How to Reach Two to Ten Times More Billings Without Working Harder. This is John Bartos. I'll be your host. We're brought to you by Redgate Adventures. It's a new adventure company that is, has all sorts of events going on over the next few years to help recruiters and recruiting owners achieve their goals. And a group events, uh, we're, we're looking at booking in January a dude ranch in Tucson, we have an event in June. We've got an event in October of this year. Uh, we'll stay tuned and get you more information uh, for that kind of stuff. I'm trying to make sure you guys don't hear my, uh, my air coming out of my mouth as we go through this thing. But hey, I'm John Bartos, and I'm extremely excited to be with you guys today over some brand new concepts that have never, ever 
been chatted about specifically in the recruiting industry. Um, some of the concepts we talk about are brand new. They're new to the industry itself. And uh, I've written many white papers on the topics. And now I'm trying to finish a book uh, by the end of June uh, to get out to everybody to talk about some of these concepts. It's almost like a discovery. When you discover something that's so unique that can help almost everybody in the world out, you want to get it out there. But what's the best means to get it out? So let's get started real quick. Making it rain. Does that make any sense? You can get two to 10 times more your billings without working harder? I mean, if, if you're like me, that concept makes absolutely no sense in the world. Uh, to, to me, it's, it, it, it's just ridiculous. I wanna share that with you because that was my thoughts before I embarked on this study. And my study was the top 1% performers everywhere in the world. Here's a question I got for you. Do you think the top 1% performers in every profession, every sport, do you think they work harder than other folks do? I can probably tell you this, some of them may have worked harder earlier in their career, uh, learning the concepts and skills and all that stuff. But I can tell you right now that in almost every sport, almost every profession, the top 1% work half as much as the other 10% performers work. And I'll prove that out to you today because it's not about how hard you work anymore. And we'll go over those concepts and how that things work. I actually got a chance to study the top 63 producers in the world, uh, the top uh, organizations. As a matter of fact, I've coached out of the top 10 recruiting firms, privately, had recru privately held recruiting firms in the United States. I probably coached eight of those and their teams to help them achieve the next level. Um, so we're going to talk about that and the results of that study. We're going to talk about baseline concepts here as well. So you understand what's going wrong with management today and why management can't do anything other than get incremental increases in the recruiting world and recruiting managers. Or, or if you're sitting on a desk and you're frustrated, you did 400,000 last year, you did 425 this year, you know you're a million dollar biller, but don't know how to get there. This one's for you, baby, right there. Um, we're also going to talk about new concepts of quantum leap theorems. That's right. All about quantum leap theorems. And then we're going to talk about quantum leap theorems in the recruiting industry. What are they specifically? What do they mean? How, how, do, we, how do we catapult from doing where we're at, we're at right now to three times, four times, five times our revenue? And I'm going to prove that out to you guys on Mathematically today on how to do that. Um, we're also going to uh, talk about two incredible offers I have at the end of the seminar. So bear with me. And uh, we're going to offer stuff that we've never offered before. Uh, we've got our blockbuster workshops coming up that you're going to get almost 50% off on. Also, uh, some of the tools that we use that typically are twice as expensive because you're on a webinar today, you get them for 50% off, plus other things that we've got for you. So a lot of stuff happening. Let me tell you my purpose of doing this. My purpose of doing this is to share with you information to help you reach your potential as a, either recruiting owner or manager or an individual biller. That's it. I want you to reach your potential. I read a book by Bob Buford a couple of years ago called Halftime. And it just really set with me because it really shared with me my purpose and what I can potentially do to help other people. Bob Buford's book Halftime virtually says a man spends, and man, I don't mean man, but man and woman, you spend half of your life, more than half of your life, trying to be successful. Then we've, when you've earned enough money in your career and doing what you need to do, then you spend, you spend time on things to be significant. Bob Buford built in the Dallas area, the, the monster churches and all sorts of different things. But you know what? Here's my concept. I love the concept from success to becoming significant because the world needs you like you would not believe. Drug problems happening, uh, state of our educational system. Uh, there's just pick, pick, pick something and you could certainly improve it from where we are today. But here's the thing. If we can get you successful faster, reach your potential in this great game of executive search, then we'll have the opportunity to get significant even faster. Guys, uh, real quick, my story. Uh, some of you may know me, some of you may not, but I wanna quickly give you a heads up who I am and what I've done. Uh, I had a 17-year career in the uh, barcode data collection space, automatic identification data collection, software, warehouse management software, scanning systems, all that kind of stuff. Left uh, Avery Dennison, VP of sales and marketing, and uh, recruiter called me and said, hey, John, have you thought of recruiting? So uh, I jumped in the recruiting space, bought an MRI network franchise, 
anyways, long story short, first thing I did, guys, when I got in this business was not, you know, jump on the phone and start making phone calls. I found the best coach I could in the world that I could at the time. And that was Pat Scopoletti. So I embarked on studying the recruiting industry for a period of three years with him. And I wanted to reach my potential in this industry. That's all I wanted to do. Now, I've done the same thing. In, in high school, I found the best college uh, uh, pole vault coach I could. My goal was to get a scholar, college scholarship. And I had five scholarships come in. And I actually went to Michigan State University on scholarship pole vaulting. But that's what you do. You find the best coach you possibly can. You learn the best you possibly can from that coach to achieve your potential and whatever it is. Uh, two years ago, I bought the Redgate Farm in Quincy, Kentucky. And I can give you story after story. I then hired an Italian consultant to help me, who's a premier wine consultant, great consultant in North America. And uh, today, uh, well, this past weekend, I planted, uh, well, I put in poles. So I put in 166 by eight poles in the ground uh, to be my trellis system. And then I've got to plant another 800 grapes this year. And I did a little over 1,200 grape plants last year. So we'll have enough wine at the end of this year. Well, it, it takes three years to mature, but uh, we'll have enough wine for about 10,000 bottles of wine. And now, I can't drink that much uh, per year. I don't know about you guys, but, you know, but here's the whole point I'm trying to make, guys. What you do is you find the best there is at the business you're looking at. Learn from what they're doing to be successful. And that's the whole point. And, and that's how you're going to be successful. So 1999, what did I do? I, I was rookie officer of the year at 750K in billings myself. My uh, 2000, I did 1.4 million in billings. Uh, 2001, not only was I a million dollar producer, I had a top 10 office within the MRI system, a multi-million dollar office. And I'm just not sharing this stuff with you to brag at all. Please don't think that. I'm just sharing this stuff with you because I've been there, done that. I've, I've, I did exactly what you have to do. Uh, 2004 started speaking all over the place. That's when you started seeing me at NAPS and some of the state organizations. Um, 2008, I, I started the RPM dashboard. Now we're the leading uh, data analytics package for recruiting industry. So most of my data I get is directly from the big billers in the recruiting industry from the RPM dashboard. It's just absolutely crazy. And it's all over the world now. It's, it's going gangbusters and I absolutely love it. 2012, I grew my company big enough to be sold. So as of today, guys, I've started and sold three different companies. Uh, I bought and sold a few different companies. And today, uh, I own Global Performance Search, which is, uh, we have offices all over the place, fast-growing executive search retained firm. I own Redgate Farm and Vineyard, Alpine Double Black Marketing Services Firm, JonathanBartos.com, which is a services firm to recruiting organizations, and three other companies. So here's a question I got for you. And I, and, and I still am a big biller in this industry and run a multi-million dollar firm. How do you do that? How do you do that? And I have lots of failures to go through. Lots of stuff didn't work, let me tell you. But, but as long as you learn from your mistakes, you're gonna do well. And I'm gonna tell you this. Everything we're gonna talk about today is not about me. It's about concepts that make people successful. That's it. If you're a recruiting owner, it's huge because it's gonna help you understand how to get your people to reach their potential. If you're an individual biller, if you're sick and tired of doing 100K or 150K or 200K, I will give you concepts today to work on that will catapult your billings double, triple, quadruple overnight. Three weeks ago, I was in Baltimore at MRI's, one of MRI's largest offices, working with their 60 to 80 recruiters, helping them catapult their billings. This is for everybody. If you're a monster biller and you already do two, $3 million in billings, this is perfect for you, what we're going to talk about, because I'll get you to four. If you're just started in this business, this is perfect as well, because I'll show you the concepts that you need to focus on initially. Boy, when I started golfing, you know, when I was a kid, I wish I would have had a golf coach so my swing would have been good. Same concept, same exact concept if you're new to this business. So I tell you, this is going to be fast and furious. Get excited because this is going to be something that's going to be new to the entire industry that we're going to go through and specifically the quantum leap theorems. But I'll tell you the strategy and reason why. And here we go if I can get my computer to change. Bingo, bingo, bingo. There it is. Okay, let's chat about that. It's an interesting story. Two years ago at a Pinnacle member meeting, top 75 recruiters in North America, we had Patrick Sylvester come in and he was chatting with everybody and Patrick typically does three to five million in billings individually. So he's talking and sharing his concepts about what his value proposition is, how he sells, who is marketplace. He's sharing everything with us. And it's a riveting couple hour conversation. Everybody got a lot from it. And then he started taking questions at the end of the talk. 
Patrick Sylvester, CEO, by the way, of Bannister, Bannister International. Look him up, uh, certainly on Google and all that stuff. But one of the questions that came from the Pinnacle members was this. Tell me about your phone time. How much phone time do you have? How many calls do you make a day? I mean, how, I mean, uh, how many marketing calls are you making to get additional search assignments? Patrick's face turned red and he was too embarrassed to answer the question. So I came to Patrick later and I said, what's, Patrick, why don't you tell everybody what's going on? And, and virtually he said to everybody, I'm just too embarrassed to tell you. So here's the whole point I wanted to make. Most of the top 1% performers in the world work far less than we do. They really do because they're so good at the quality of what they do, they don't have to do that much. So, okay, let's understand that. Here's another story. Rick Barron, one of the top SAP integration sales reps in really the world, where the normal sales rep does two, three, $4 million, Rick does 25 to 30 million. And the same thing for him. I said, Rick, what, 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 what makes you so successful? You're 10, 15 times more successful than the average. What is it that makes you so successful? And Rick shared with me one, his one simple concept, which is one quantum leap theorem. And he said this, John, like everybody else will run after everything, unless I can win the deal, I pass. I said, what? He said, yeah, unless I can win the deal, qualify it so it's exactly in my niche, in my, in my sweet spot, I pass on the deal. So you didn't work on it then. No, unless it's a perfect deal for me, I don't work on it. That's a concept of the zebra that we're going to talk about in just a little bit. But you see out there, the top performers all over the place work far less than the folks who don't because they're so good at what they do. And I'll prove it out to you in just a here few moments. But it's the same thing with top offices all over the world. The top offices grow the way they grow because of quantum leap theorems to actually grow an office. And it's very exciting. So to understand this whole theory of how these top producers produce so much, really the whole concepts we need to take a look at is to understand and start to understand the baseline uh, definitions for all these things. Now let's take a quick look at Moneyball, the movie. Do you guys see the movie with Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill? I mean, it's a great movie. It's still on Netflix. And uh, it's really about the 2002 um, Oakland Athletics baseball team. Uh, and the whole idea was, here's a low budgeted team. I think their, their budget was $41 million. And, and at $41 million, the Oakland A's had to try to compete with, you know, the Yankees that had a payroll of 125 million. So here you are one third of your competitors payroll and all of a sudden Oakland A's came up with a concept to see, okay, if we can compete with these guys, all we have to do is have people who perform at higher than their pay rate. You know, so they're, they're a valued player, you know, they score. So they took a look at the performance metrics, the statistics for players and started picking players that they quote were undervalued based on baseball. And they looked at people and how they got on base, uh, on base percentages, uh, and they looked at fielding percentages. But when they picked their team, they picked it all based on statistics on how they should be valued or undervalued uh, based on what the marketplace uh, will bear. And by the way, at the end of 2002, guess what happened? They were a playoff team. So a, a team, a third of the price was actually a playoff team. And they did that because of analytics behind it. So let's take a look at concepts that we need to understand. One concept is, a, uh, two concepts actually, principle of incremental increase. And I want everybody to understand this very, very well because this is what most managers manage by. Uh, matter of fact, this is what football coaches do mostly as well. Almost every coach that's out there, they manage by increased activity is really what they do. The principle of incremental increase says if I give 10% more to anything, I'll probably get 10% back. So if I make 10% calls, if I do 10% I do more marketing calls, I have 10% more phone time, I get 10% more send outs, there's a good chance I'm gonna get 10% back. That's called the principle of incremental increase. That means you keep working harder. But at some point in time, the value decreases. What do I mean by that? If I work 18, eight hours today and I work 16 hours tomorrow, can I double my billings? Well, you may be able to if you work that much more. Okay, so if I go 16 and then I work 24 hours a day instead of 16 hours a day, will I even uh, increase it again by 40%? And the answer is no. And the reason being is because the quality of what you do is going to decrease based on the amount of time. Guys, there's research out there that says now the perfect time in an eight-hour day is you work 51 minutes 
then you take 17 minutes off. Go mess around, go outside, do whatever you do for fun, but do 52 minutes and then take 17 minutes off and do that for the rest of the day. So if you do that for an eight hour day, you're not even working six hours virtually. You're not even working that much, but that's how humans are, 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 are put together. That's our genetics. That's our genetic code. So if you take a look at that working more and more and more, eh, make more calls, work harder, longer, the beatings will continue to morale improves. Th that isn't always the way to get you where you need to go. But that's called the principle of incremental increase. And if you wanted to increase your billings by 20%, well, work harder 20%. You could certainly do that and it'll probably work out well. But I'm not going to talk about a 20% increase. Who cares about a 20% increase? That means it's taking more time away from your kids and your, your free time, your golf game and all that stuff. So let's not even talk about that. Let's talk about the principle of critical mass now and what that is. The principle of critical mass says you got to have enough volume to be successful in anything. If you want to play hoop, basketball, and you never shoot the ball, you're not going to be successful. So you got to shoot it a certain number of times. Now, now I know Malcolm called Gladwell said you got to do outliers in his book outliers that you got to do 10,000 hours of something to be successful. I would totally disagree with that. I'd say you're practicing the wrong things. If you practice the right things, it could be a heck of a lot less than that. Uh, and we'll go through that concept fairly quickly. But, but the rule of critical mass, the principle of critical mass says you have to have enough volume in something to be successful. And the worse you are at it, <laughs> this is the thing that sucks, guys. The worse you are at whatever you're doing, the more critical mass you're gonna need to be successful. So if you're super good at recruiting, you could probably do it for an hour and bill a million five. If you're not really good at recruiting and need to build a million five, you could work for 24 hours a day and you're not going to see that. So the rule of critical mass and principle of critical mass virtually says you have to do something to a certain level of volume in order to be successful. And that's going to depend on how good you are at what you do. Important concept to know, because if you're not really good at something, you got to do a lot of it. If you're super good at it, you won't have to do very much of it. And that's the whole point of it. The principle of critical mass. Now in everything, there's critical success factors in recruiting. You gotta be good at marketing, you gotta be good at recruiting, you gotta be good at research. Yes, you gotta use your LinkedIn profile, you've gotta have social media marketing today, all sorts of other things you need to do. You gotta get people on a phone, you gotta get people to return your phone call. You gotta call your, qualify your candidates so when you get an offer coming out, they don't turn it down. That's a no-no in the recruiting industry. How do we stop that stuff? So those are critical success factors that are in anything that you do, anything at all. But the principle of quantum leap theorems is radically different. Totally different. This says you can get two to 35 times increase in effectiveness in anything just by doing it right. Just by doing it much better than what you're currently doing. And that's the principle we're gonna focus some time on. And let's talk about that. There's quantum leap theorems in everything, every single thing in the world that's out there. First of all, uh, teachers. Uh, let's talk about the quantum leap theorems for a phenomenal teacher who's gonna make our school systems rock and graduate kids who are ready to be super successful in life, confident, and have no psychological bills. I know I kind of threw that in as kind of a joke, but it's really a horrible state of where we are from a teaching perspective. So, so I studied teachers. Uh, and not only was I having problems hiring kids out of college, but, but I really studied what make, made an effective teacher. And this is great for your kids. If you guys got kids, listen up. This is kind of important. Here's all the research factors they looked at. The critical success factors were time in school. How much school? The, what they're eating for lunch and breakfast. Are they ready to go? Are they having all sugar? So they have sugar, blood sugar level drops. All that stuff was, was researched. Um, they also took a look at the cultural environment in school because that's a critical success factor. If the kid doesn't like being there, they're not going to be successful there. They also looked at the peers of the individual to see if they had a, uh, you know, a, a mindset to learn and a mindset to achieve and all those kind of things. But there was one quantum leap theorem in a teacher that was head and shoulders about everybody else that gave an eight times increase in effectiveness. This one little thing, guys, this is super important. And it was a quality of teacher. And I didn't, I, first of all, when I saw the research, I didn't believe it. What do you mean? You mean better quality teachers can, can give an eight times more effectiveness in teaching? And the answer was yes. Uh, if you got a great, you guys probably had great teachers in your life. You guys have horrible teachers in your life. Remember those? Whatever the teacher was who was a horrible teacher, whatever subject it was, probably is not your favorite subject. Whatever the great teacher you had is probably one of your favorite subjects, and it's what shaped your life. So I'm in a wedding 
four weeks ago in Medellin, Colombia. I have my research team there. Victor Flores, who you guys may talk to in the future, uh, helps run the research sector. And he also runs my Alpine Double Black Marketing Services firm. But I'm over there for his wedding. Beautiful country, by the way. No, there's not drug lords all over the place. that You may think there is. It's uh, actually as beautiful as Toronto and as clean as Toronto. So it's absolutely crazy. So I'm sitting there and I'm sitting next to this very nice lady um, who's married. And I said, uh, what do you do for a living? And she said, uh, well, I'm a PhD in mathematics. I, I work on the DNA structure for cattle. And this lady was probably 28 years old. And I'm thinking, wow. I said, you must have loved math through school as a joke. And here's what she said. She said, John, I hated math. Matter of fact, till 11th grade, I couldn't stand math. Just hated it. And then all of a sudden, in 11th grade, I had this incredible teacher. And he, sh he shared with me the you know, fun of math and all this kind of stuff. Anyways, long story short, got an undergrad in mathematics, PhD in mathematics. Now she's changing the DNA structure uh, for the cattle industry for some of the biggest companies in the world. Guys, your teacher is everything. This is why my number one success out there, I think, is that finding the greatest teacher for you, your children, the greatest coach to help you get where you guys need to go. Because without this, somebody who's been there, done that before, without that guidance, you have no idea what your real potential is. And your real potential is great. Absolutely great. By the way, same thing for lumberjacks, quantum leap theorem. Most lumberjacks, instead of uh, cutting down a 15 inch oak tree, uh, the normal person takes 107 chops, they can do it in 10. 10, that's right. How do they do it? They look at three trees, they have a different technique, all sorts of different things. Golfers, professional golfers on the PGA Tour, their quantum leap theorem isn't driving, it's not putting, uh, it's, part of, it's kind of part of it. But the whole idea they look at, the number one ratio they look at to improve is putts gain per round. You need two putts per hole. If I can average 1.5, 1.25, I score. And that's what they focus on. And to gain that, their skill set has to be putting. Obviously, short game has to be there as well. Um, same thing for all sales reps and same thing for all recruiters. There's quantum leap theorems. So let's dive deep into this quantum leap theorems, okay? So, so quantum leap theorems came from quantum phys physics. And, and quantum physics, uh, they were studying a molecule, okay? And they saw that this molecule would, for no reason at all, leap over to a totally different area without use of any energy at all they so, and, and they had no idea what it was and what it did is it leaped another area joined another cell uh picked up a proton and uh they called that a quantum leap so that comes from quantum quantum physics it's about an atom that makes this move with nobody understands why which is why that study of quantum physics is so important so so the the idea of quantum leap theorems it's not about working any harder at all or any longer or doing anything that's going to achieve you to work out, do more, work harder, blah, blah, blah. Really, the quantum leap theorems are the things that you do it differently, have a different mindset change. You have a different way of thinking. Usually involves a skill set tweak or a paradigm shift of what you're doing. And that would be a quantum leap, an absolute quantum leap. Now, for the last four years, guys, and you guys noticed that I disappeared from NAPS and all the different uh, trade shows that are out there. And the reason being is because I've been helping consult a few companies, taking them from a contingent firm to a retained firm. And I probably put 350 companies through that. They paid me a ridiculous amount of money to do that. That's one quantum leap theorem only. But if they can move that, make that move from contingent to a money down search, and it's a good search, they can see three to five times an increase in billings by doing that. That's, and, and, and in recruiting, there's seven of them, not just one. So I would spend two days with companies just helping them make that change alone, which is a simple change. And we'll talk about that today too, by the way, everybody should be doing that. But it, that's a simple change. There's, there's seven more. There's, there's more quantum leap theorems than that in recruiting to help you get where you need to go. And it usually involves a skill set tweak or a paradigm shift. Now we talked about the rule of critical mass, critical success factors and, and the principle of incredible increase. More importantly, we're going to spend some time on quantum leap theorems and what they are in recruiting right now. So the first one is the principle of the zebra, all right? And this is critically important because it's a book that was written by Chad and John Kozer. If you haven't bought it, I would strongly suggest you get it. And the book's about how 80 some percent of the sales representatives throughout the world sell to the wrong people. They sell to people who you have no business selling to. By the way, remember my Rick Barron story? This is exactly what he did right. 
And the whole principle of zebra is not about the zebra, actually. Well, it is in the end, but it's about the lion. When lions are young, what do they do? They go after everything. They jump after snakes, squirrels, rabbits, you name it. Try to eat everything. But they realize then once a lion pride got roughly five years and old and average, that they went after one main animal, it was a zebra. Why? Because the zebra gave them the most return and energy for the amount of energy they expended. So here's a question I do, and this is really important. You can get two to four times more effectiveness through your billings if you just get your zebra right. What is the most synergy? First of all, what would be the greatest return for the amount of energy you spend currently? And when I go through this practice, and I went through this with hundreds, if not a thousand recruiters already in the last four or five years, most people want to be too wide. Most people want to work on everything. Hey, John, I know I'm working on packaging now. I was thinking about cybersecurity. What do you think? I think you're nuts. That's what I think. <laughs> the whole point being is everybody wants to get wider and wider when all your success is bringing it down and getting narrow. So you have extreme synergies with your client base and extreme synergies with your candidate database. Guys, here's what happened with me in December. We had a phenomenal December. Now we had some months that weren't so good uh, previous to that. But I, what I did is I took one specific marketplace. Uh, we come up with about 32, 33 candidates. And uh, within my partners, as well as I, we placed one Deal a, uh, one deal a day. We did one a day in December. One placement a day happened in December. Just think of that. It's not impossible, guys. If you have the right zebra, you can actually do that. So number one, zebra is the concept of quantum leap theorem. And you increase in your effectiveness could be two to four times. Now, let's talk about your value proposition. How good your value proposition? That means how many calls or messages you, you reach to how many people you get returned. I mean, so, so if you take a look at that, if I uh, reach out to 10 different, let's just use recruiting now, 10 different candidates, and one person returns my call and say, hey, John, I think I'm interested. Okay, I have a 10 to 1 ratio. Most people are higher than that. They're closer to 21. Actually, if you can bring your value proposition, proposition in either marketing or recruiting from 20 to 1 or 10 to 1 down to 2 to 1, you have a 10 times increase in your effectiveness which increases your billings immeasurably just by this one little thing. Let's keep going. Let's talk about your recruiting skill set. Now, your recruiting skill set is your recruiting presentations you make to a live candidate, not a voicemail, not an email, and the candidate raises his hand and says, hey, John, put me in the game. It's me. It's me. That's your recruiting presentation to QC ratio. You can call it uh, recruiting presentation to candidate ratio. I don't care what you call it, but it points directly to your recruiting skills. Most people are 10 to 1. You bring that down to 2 to 1, you increase your effectiveness five times. Guys, here's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a 10% increase, a 20% increase. I'm talking five times. Times it by 500%. That's what it is. This is huge. This isn't, let's get a 25% increase in the next 30 days. Guys, I'm going to change your world. I'm going to change your company. And I'll show you how we're going to do this. Let's go to the next one. Let's talk marketing skills. Most people are 12 to one. How do I know this? I own the RPM dashboard. We have thousands of people worldwide on this thing. I see their numbers every day. And they're some of the top firms in the world. Most marketing presentations to how many searches they actually get is how good you are at marketing. And uh, we've taken it down from 12 to one down to two to one, which gives you another six times increase in effectiveness. Just, just the ba basic math, guys. It's all we're doing is basic math here. All of these... If you look at the quantum leaps, here's the thing. They point to a skill set. It's a specific skill set. Is zebra a skill set? Well, yeah, it is, because you got to narrow down your zebra to which you get the greatest return from the amount of energy you spend on it. That is what you have to do. Now, let's look at the other one. Guys, remember when I told you I changed people from contingent to retain firms, increased their revenue two to five times? Well, guess what? Um, that's all I did is worked on the quality of searches, their job order to placement ratio. How many job orders they actually get to how many placements they actually make. And I, I reword it when I, when I do these workshops, how many job orders you actually work on because you make take stuff you're not going to work on to how many placements you actually make. Guys, believe it or not, the recruiting world is anywhere from 10 to one to 20 to one on the ratio. I mean, they'll work on 10 or 15 searches to get one placement. Guys, here's my question for you. What's yours? How many placement, uh, how many searches do you work on currently or your company works on in order to get one placement? And that's kind of what your uh, job order to placement ratio is. You can take that down to 1.25 to 1. 
That's where it should be in the industry. Now, I don't know who sold you contingent search. I know who sold me contingent search, but there's another world out there and the world started before contingent and it's called mutually committed relationships. And if you get your clients to mutually, rela uh, uh, mutually committed relationships, your revenue goes through the roof. Did you guys look at the math on here? How many times if you get your quality of searches, does your revenue go up in, a, in eight times, go up by, by eight times? So, so I'm, I'm sure there's, there's a world out there that you guys can see monumental increases in what you do without working harder. Now, yes, you got to learn the skill set, but I'm not asking you to make more phone calls. I'm not asking you to do any of that stuff. I'm not, I'm not saying work a, a second longer than you did before. You just need to work on these skill sets to be successful. Let's take a look at your matching skills. Now, a lot of the world is two to one to three to one. It should be one to one, meaning that every person I send out for a current search you're working on, do they get interviewed or not? That's how good you match. When you don't match well and you send three candidates out and get one interview, your client says, huh, what the heck's John doing? I'm wasting a lot of time looking at average resumes. And by the way, that is your brand in the recruiting industry. What your clients think of you is your brand in the industry. One of the first things that Patrick Sylvester, by the way, he was with the MRI network system and I started hobnobbing with him and trying to get information from him when I first started uh, the, uh, with MRI network. But one of the first things he said in my training class in my second week on the job or buying my franchise, he said, send phenomenal talent to your clients because that will be your brand your clients remember. Guys, don't ever put lipstick on a pig. We've all done it, you know what I mean. We've, we've, we've dressed that up, changed the resume, changed the title maybe, or had the candidate do it. We know the candidates is average at best, but you know what? They're alive and breathing. So let's send them in. Oh, I haven't sent a candidate in in about three weeks. I better send somebody in or think, they're thinking I'm not gonna work on it. No, don't be doing that stuff. Your matching skills is your brand. You can take it down to three to one and see a three to one to one and see a three time increase in effectiveness. And another one, uh, quantum leap theorem is your average fee. Getting your average fee up is simple. It's just simply asking for it and backing it up with a value proposition. And so all of these things, by improving your quality, by improving your quantum leap theorems, you will create billing miracles. So what do I work on now? I'm on the RPM dashboard. I'll tell you exactly what I work on. Uh, I'm working on my average fee to go higher and higher and higher. Uh, I need to currently work on my marketing presentation to job order ratio. It's great, but it could be better. Even big million dollar billers could be bigger billers by simply tweaking small, small changes in, in their quantum leap theorems, which are ratios. Now, I wanted to share with everybody that in making it rain, this, this little webinar is really just a, a, a snapshot of what our workshops are. We have one June 4th through 6th and one October 4th through 6th uh, this year. We go over eight sessions over three days to go over every single quantum leap theorem plus more. We even go over things like how, what's the secret to direct marketing today, how to get appointments based on email, all sorts of other things to help your business. So I want to give you a heads up. We do training on the quantum leap theorems and performers. So, so if I'm an owner and manager, why should I be interested in these quantum leap theorems as well as make it rain if you want to go there? Well, number one, you learn how to get your team performing to their potential without just asking them, uh, hold on one second, without asking them to move, uh, make more calls and do more activity. And you'll switch from real management to real coaching. And this is where miracles get created from a, from a management perspective. When you learn to coach, not based on activity, but coach based on skill sets. And, and there's not a lot of trainers that do that. Guys, uh, in, in the last week, I trained 12 people to be certified on the RPM dashboard on how to train based on quantum leap theorems. Not train just by make more calls, stay longer, come in early, you know, work harder, miss your kids' ball games. <laughs> None of that stuff. Um, individual billers, if you're new, you're going to come up to uh, speed by about twice as fast as anybody else has that went through the system because you'll understand the concepts or math behind the game. If you are tenured, you can make some small tweaks and see monster increases and big billers just get bigger. So the average increase we're seeing now is two, realistically two to seven times increase in billings if they, if they do these things and put them together. Just some examples for everybody so you get a chance to see it. There, there, we have eight full sessions over two and a half days. First one is establishing your zebra. 
we help people uh, actually learn how to build high performing teams. So you'll be professionally educated. You'll have a PhD in talent management on how to build high performing uh, teams. So you won't be just sending stuff over and hoping something sticks against the wall. You'll actually be a guide and a trusted advisor to your clients on how to build high performing teams, which in turn make them an industry leader. And then we'll talk about analytics, critical success factors, and we'll also talk about getting somebody from contingent to money down search. All of those things will be done. And here's a point I wanted to hit home, just so you get the concept. Just so you get the concept. If you just improve your searches that you're bringing in now, here's the numbers, guys. These are the exact numbers. Let's say you do 100 searches per year. The average fee is 20000 per search. We didn't go too high. We didn't get too crazy on this thing, right? Not too high. The three most important numbers you have to know is if you do contingent, not exclusive, you're going to fill 18% of your searches. Yeah, that's 82% of your time wasted, absolutely wasted, all your effort and resources. But you'll bill 360000 bucks if you do that, based on that. If you're exclusive, just get exclusivity. Don't even get money down. Just get exclusivity. You're going to fill one out of two of your searches, and you take a good search. You'll fill one on your two. It's, it's math is proven, guys. You'll go from billing 360, working the same amount, not any longer, just change the quality of your search and you'll bill a million dollars. That's 2.78 times uh, the increase. I mean, if you take a look at that, you'll increase your billings 2.78 times, not 20%, 30%, almost three times just by changing this. Now, if you change from exclusive to con contingency and do 100 searches again, 20K per year, you're going to bill 1.8, almost $1.9 million. And that's 5.2 times that of somebody doing non-exclusive contingency. That's the real numbers, guys. That's how they work out. That's why whoever sold you the contingent bag of goods sold you the contingent bag of goods. Nobody has to sell anything when they do contingent work. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm in a cybersecurity. I'm a recruiter. Great. Yeah. Um, do you have any needs? Yeah, I sure do. What, what's your fees? Well, I'm at 25%. Well, we only go 15. Can we do 20% contingent? Sure. Okay, there is no selling and contingent search. Come on. Nobody has to do anything. Somebody has to put a value proposition to sell on why they should go with you opposed to everybody else. And it's really simple. And to take them to get to exclusive contingency, it's easy. It's, it's a five-minute conversation with me, and I'll get you to take everybody there to exclusive contingency to get your revenue up 2.7 times of what it is now. That's the power of quantum leap theorems. This is only one thing we're talking about, the job order replacement ratio. That's the numbers, guys. That's it right there. We have seven of these things to work on. Seven, not one of them. Now, here's the exciting things. If, if, if you look at quantum leap theorems, there's only one tool in the world that measures these. So you have no idea what yours is now. You probably don't know what your job order replacement ratio is, your matching skills, your, how good you are at marketing, how good you are at recruiting. You have no idea. Most people don't. Matter of fact, most coaches don't within the industry as well. That's right, all the top people you just listened to on Mike Johnson's show, most of them have no clue what we're talking about right now. They don't, because they never see their numbers. They start coaching you best based on what they assume instead of what they actually have. Janta, when he comes on, uh, you get on one of Mike Janta's coaching programs, the first thing he does is put you on the RPM dashboard. Why? Because then he can tell what's really going well, what's not going well, and he can read your numbers and read the ratios. Uh, Greg Dorshin just got every, all of his team on the RPM dashboard and all of his coaching students. Bob Marshall jumping on all his people now getting on the RPM dashboard. It's the only tool, inexpensive tool, that helps you measure where you are now, where you're going, and then gives you training and development specifically on the quantum leap ratios. Just want to give you a couple screens of uh, the RPM dashboard so you see what it is. Hooks to next level exchange. Video-based training. It's kind of cool. We now have certified coaches as of last week. Bob Marshall, Mike Gianta, Greg Dorshin, Jordan Rayboy, certified coach. Jeremy Sizemore, Brad Stevens, and Jim Josick. But here's the whole point, you guys. You guys can achieve whatever you want to in life. You really can. Stop doing it the way you're doing. You're, you're working way too hard. If you guys just focus on where you are now, figure it out. Figure, get a baseline. Where am I? What are my skill sets in marketing, in recruiting, in matching skills? How do I look in terms of my zebra? You know, uh, how, 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 am I, how am I doing specifically in those skill sets that need to be measured that will give me a quantum leap if I improve on it? You can be there as well. So here's what I'm offering you guys. And this is exclusive to only the folks on this webinar right now. Here it is. Here's the first deal. One is you can allow you guys to go to the Making It Rain three-day workshop. It's not a seminar. It's a workshop. You will leave this place with skill sets in every single one of these pertaining to your industry. So when you get back on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever the day is you get back, 
you'll be able to implement and see the kind of changes that you make. You get all scripts. You'll also get eight thousand dollars in freebies. You get the RPM dashboard for free. You get books for free. You get coaching for free. All sorts of craziness. To, uh, today it's four thousand nine hundred ninety dollars for that three day course. You guys get it for twenty seven ninety nine. It's a no brainer. Right there is a tiny URL forward slash John Bartos to get on that. But if you can't afford that, and I got it, you know, life's expensive, things are happening, you may not have three days, you can at least get on the RPM dashboard. And I made this thing the cheapest I've ever made it in my life. Normally, it's $59.99 a month to get on the RPM dashboard. Helps you set goals, uh, helps you calculate what you have to do on a daily basis, gives you very graphical dashboards, as you saw, of how to achieve what you need to achieve. But then it gives you training and development, what you need help on. And it shares with you the quantum leap theorems and how well you're doing so you can make improvement. If you guys click right now on tinyurl.com, and you can't click on there, obviously, but uh, type it in, passion for performance. We're also going to get about four or five other deals at 50% at off. You'll have the opportunity to get a lot more off than this just by going there and registering and being uh, a part of the uh, part of the RPM family as well as a part of the Make It Ring family. So, so an ending, let me say this to everybody. It's important that you, if you want to achieve your potential, number one, you've got to know where you're at. You really have. And my goal for you, as I said at the beginning, is I want to get you successful fast because I want to get you on the road to significance immediately. Do you have the ability to change life as we know it? There's so many talented people out there. You have so much potential to do what you need to do. But if you're stuck in this recruiting game, eight hours a day, five days, six days a week, you'll never have a chance to do that. So I, my goal is to help you get as successful super, super fast to reach your potential, but then it'll allow you to be significant in life and whatever you want to do. Guys, there's a series of my companies. Get a hold of me. I'm here to help out. If you have any questions on the Making It Rain workshop, give me a shout. Matter of fact, I'll put that thing back on there so you guys get a chance to see it. Uh, if you guys have any questions on the RPM dashboard, we also are offering some killer coaching deals. So if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching on how to get there with one of the 12 certi co certified coaches or, or me, we are offering 50% off on a lot of that as well. It's something to help you reach your potential. And if there's any time to invest in something, this would probably be it. Uh, I know they say that personal coaching is about a 600% return on investment. I guarantee the Making It Rain seminar will be over a 1,000% return on your money because we're gonna work on every single quantum leap theorem there is to help you in your industry with scripts. You'll role play it through and be ready when you come back to rock and roll. And then you get $8,000 worth of freebies as well, as you'll see as you click on the, those links. Just a lot of stuff for you guys. In parting, I wanna say this. There's a lot of things in the world out there to do. And you guys chose this phenomenal, phenomenal field of executive search. Now, we're the only industry out there where, number one, you can change somebody's life overnight by helping them with their career. Is that, is that right? Two, you can change a company overnight as well by helping them achieve and get top performers going to their organization. More importantly, you can make as much money as you want here to achieve whatever part, uh, whatever life dream you may have. I'm here to help you achieve whatever that life dream is. Share it with me. I'll do whatever I can to help you achieve what you need to do. Take this stuff down. Get on the links. Check them out. Even if you don't buy it, get on the links. Look at it. See what's going on, specifically on the RPM one, because we offer five more deals after the RPM one. And I'll look forward to helping you guys achieve what you need to achieve in 2018. Rock and roll, guys. You need anything, let me know. And I'll look forward to chatting with you. Good luck.